Well, over on another channel, Chris Matthews predicted the president would be at a massive disadvantage in his meeting with Vladimir Putin because, of course, Putin knows everything about his little puppet, Donald Trump. Our president is walking into a room tomorrow morning in Hamburg, Germany, yep. with a guy looking across at him like you're looking at me, who knows everything, who knows every meeting that his people, whether yeah. it was Mike Flynn or it was John, J Jared Kushner or anybody else who met with the <laughs> Russians in the last year, he, he knows, knows it secrets. all. He knows it's it all. all. If he had a little excitement in some hotel room in <laughs> Moscow X many years ago, according to that dossier, he's got those pictures, he's looked at them a million times. He knows every damn thing about Donald Trump. You can't edit live television, but, you know, still. Back in reality, the question is, what should the president be looking to gain from today's meeting with the Russian leader? Well, for that, we turn to an actual expert on the subject, a Russian speaker. Stephen Cohen is professor emeritus of Russian studies at NYU, formerly taught at Princeton. He's also a contributing editor at The Nation magazine. He joins us tonight. Uh, professor, the first thing you notice is just how much the press is rooting for this meeting between our president and the Russian president to fail. Why? Why would they want it to fail? Well, it's a kind of pornography. <clears throat> Just as there's no uh, love in pornography, there's no American national interest in this bashing of Trump and Putin. As a historian, uh, let me tell you the headline I would write instead, what we witnessed today in Hamburg. Uh, potentially historic new detente anti-Cold War partnership begun by Trump and Putin, but meanwhile, attempts to sabotage it escalate. Now, I ha you said I was an expert. I actually do have one expertise. I've seen a lot of summits, as we call meetings between American and Russian presidents. Was, president, uh, was present at some, even participated uh, in the first George Bush's summit uh, preparation when he met with Gorbachev in Malta, he invited me to Camp David to debate before his team. In that context, I think what we saw today uh, was potentially the most fateful meeting between an American and Russian president since the wartime. The reason is, is that the relationship with Russia is so dangerous, and yet we have a president who might have been crippled or cowed by these Russiagate attacks on him, and yet he was not. He was, I think, politically courageous. It went well. They did important things. And this will be astonishing to be said, I know, but I think maybe today we witnessed President Trump emerging as an American statesman. I think it was a very good day for everybody. How much of, of the attacks on Russia from um, the foreign policy establishment from the Democratic Party, even from some Republicans, how much do they really have to do with Iran and Russia's alliance with Iran and Syria? I think, think a lot, but you know, you've got three major actors being demonized in America. One is, of course, Putin. Second right. is Trump. But then the leader of Syria, President Assad, is demonized here. Remember that the main thing they achieved today and I said to you when we, you had me on before, Tucker, that I thought the primary aspiration of Trump should be an anti-terrorism alliance with the Kremlin. Right. I thought that was vital. That is, in fact, and they said as much, uh, what they spent their time on today. They formed an alliance. And that means that we will side for now with Russia uh, with Assad. That will be assailed in Washington because he's loathed in Washington almost as much as uh, Trump and Putin. Why, but why is that? Could you f put a finer point on that? My frustration in this debate is that a lot of the players in it are not straightforward about what they're really for and what they're really against. Their agendas are cloaked. Why is Assad the focus of so much anger in Washington? I don't know, and I try only to talk about things I've actually studied. What I do know is what, when the Syrian civil war began, what, five, six years ago, uh, there were a lot of dirty hands in that mix, including American ones. Uh, everybody was arming somebody. So we have a monstrous war going on there with so many groups being armed by so many different states. But the thing about Assad for me has always been, and maybe this is parochial, but he has been the protector of the Jews, of the uh, Christians, and of the non-jihadist 
Islamic population in Syria. At a time when the main threat there, uh, the Islamic State, uh, ISIS, chops off the heads of these people. It would seem to me exactly. that we should stick with Assad until we defeat these people. But focus, if you will, <laughs> before we end. Something that both Trump and Putin said today, they said, we are meeting, we have agreed, and we promise positive things to come. In other words, they have formed a political yep. partnership. And now it goes forward, but it will be viciously attacked, and already is, if you look at the press today here. Yeah, mindless, mindless. Thank you for the common sense, Professor. Stephen Cohen, joining us tonight. Thank you.